Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to multimodality. What is multimodality? Uh, in our social semiotics lesson, we talk about signs which have meanings. So there are different types of signs and the types of signs are what we call social, social semiotic modes. So understanding how meaning is constructed using different modes is what we call multimodality. The world of meaning has always been multimodal. So that is what Kress says. And what does it mean? It means that in this world, okay, we, don't, we do not only depend on language to make meaning, but we also make use of other semiotic modes in uh, delivering our messages to others. So multimodality is a new and rapidly developing subfield of communication studies, which looks beyond language to the multiple modes of communicating or making meaning. For example, from images to sound and music. So the emphasis now is no longer on language alone, but on a combination of different semiotic modes. So there is a combination of linguistics and other semiotic modes in a way how we uh, give meanings or relay messages to others. So what is a mode? There are four types of modes. First is image, writing, layout, and music. Are there any modes that you can think of? Mode is a socially shaped and culturally given semiotic resource for making meaning. For example, image, writing, gesture, speech, moving image, soundtrack, and 3D objects are examples of, examples of modes used in representation and communication. There are four types of semiotic code or mode. First is linguistics, visual, auditory, gesture, and spatial. Linguistics includes oral and written language, lexical items, and grammar rules, while visual includes still and moving images and also colors. Auditory, where we have music, sound effects, volume, pitch, and rhythm, and gesture as what we learn in our non-verbal communication lesson. We learned about facial, uh, facial expressions and body language, how we use this non-verbal communication as cues for messages. So that is gesture. And spatial is about layout layout and organization of objects and space. So what is the difference between written and image? For written, it is a logic of succession in time, temporal and sequential. So what does it mean? In brief, it means if we have lexical items or words where we put them together, we have to put the lexical items in the right order, in the right sequence. If not, it will, it will not make a sentence because it will not have a meaning. Unlike written words, what about image? For image, we can put the elements in any order we like. So they are non-sequential. They don't have to follow the logic sequence, but they follow the logic of display in space spatial and non-sequential. So to Chris, he says, the order of the written text is fixed while the order of the image text is open. The world told is a different world from the world shown. So this is interesting. If you look at the four images here, they, are, they have ironic meanings. And sometimes the messages are easier to be deciphered through um, 
images, but sometimes the meanings are easier to be deciphered through languages. So therefore, if you look at these images, they are all have the ironic meanings and they are easier to be shown in the form of an image rather than in the written form. In the social media nowadays, we are familiar with all the emojis or icon and we use them a lot. And some of them are very useful and they, does, they do make meaning here, but some we do not know. We, we can understand what they mean, but we do not know how to use them. So we have different emojis and icons to help the social media users to communicate from one to the other and through the use of emoji. And sometimes, you know, you can get messages without any words, but only the emoji. And it does make sense to you. Okay. In this uh, PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint slide uh, template, there are different icons okay, for the users to choose to use in order for them uh, to, to deliver their message to their readers. Okay. But I'm not very sure how useful they are. Okay. I would like to draw your attention to these three images, to the three emojis, the smiley face, we have the smiley face here, means, which means happy, sad face, and skeptical. So how do I know the meaning? How do I know that this is happy, sad, and skeptical? This is because I am a member of the society. So we create the meaning in the society. So therefore, as a member of society, we share the knowledge, we share the background, we share the context. Therefore, the, main, the signs, emojis have the meaning in the society. Similar to SFL by holiday, there are three meta functions in systemic functional linguistic. So, Visual communication or multimodality also uh, has three meta functions, which are representations, which resemble ideational, interaction, which is like interpersonal, and composition, which takes from textual. For the representation, it is about experiential meaning to present the objects or participants, which can be people, things, or places, and how they are related to each other. And for the interaction, we look at the interaction between or among the participants or between the producer and the receiver. So it can be in different kinds of social relation either power, um, social distance, and so forth. For composition, we look at the arrangements of the elements to allow the different kind of textual meanings. For example, like given and new, ideal or real. So in short, there are three meta functions to meta uh, multimodality just like systemic functional linguistic by holiday, we have representational. Under representational, we have two components, which are participants and process types. For participants, they can be people, place, and things. There are two types of process, which are narrative and conceptual. Narrative is the process of doing or happening while conceptual is the process of being. Interactive, we have three, um, three relations. One is social distance. 
Another one is either frontal or oblique. And the third one is the power. For composition, we have three elements. First is information value, and then salience, and lastly, framing. For information value, we look the placement of the elements, whether they are on the left or on the right, in the center or, in the, or at the margin, at the top or at the bottom. For the salience, there are four ways to, uh, to signify salience. First is either it is foregrounded or it is in the background. The use of col color contrast, sharpness, and size. The bigger the size, the salient it is. And lastly, framing. We have two types of framing, the thick and thin. The thick framing to show that the elements are not connected to each other. Well, think means otherwise. So these are the references that I use for this video. And thank you for watching.